Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you all here to the Sunday morning worship service of the Westside Church of Christ in Alton, Texas for July the 12th. We're halfway through almost July. That's incredible. July the 12th, 2020. I uh, want to uh, make everyone welcome here that's here at the building and also many who are still watching the service uh, online, either live or maybe a little bit later. And especially we want all of our visitors to know how much we appreciate you being here uh, to come together to this place or to join us on the internet as we worship the Lord. So let's join our voices together as Richie comes and leads us in singing. Stamp this song to prayer follow for five eight seven. Yeah. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem gray all the way through, there's a silver line that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see, my friend, trust in his promises, friend. Sing and be happy, press all to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what tomorrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then you are truly can sing. You gotta sing. sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust in him who leads you, he will keep your soul right on. Be faithful, look to you in and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing to be happy, Sing to be happy today. All who fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust in each day, we shall have pleasure and gold. We gotta sing and be happy, press on to the gold, trust in Him. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for the opportunity that we have to gather here in this beautiful building, sing songs to you, hear your word, and go forth and in front of here and try to spread your word, Lord. We thank you for everything you've given us and, and everything you've done for us. Be with our nation today, Lord. It is in uh, bad shape. That's the best, best way I can put it, Lord. We need your help bad. Uh, we need help with our leaders. We need help with our individuals to try to right our, our path and, and correct our, our ways. Be with our sick today, Lord. 
help them uh, put your healing hand on them, Lord, and bring them back to wellness. Be with our military, Lord. Keep them safe and bring them home safely. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Be seated. <clears throat> Number 71. Number 71. Number 71. Today, what tomorrow may bring, or sunshine or rain, the Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith. Obscuring the brightness of God. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies. The master looks on at the strife. <coughs> Living my faith in Jesus above. Trusting confiding in his great love. From all sin. Living by faith. 
the word, Brother Ray. Thank you, Brother. <laughs> As I begin my message this morning, I want to ask you, how many of you remember this very famous logo? The older folks do. Yeah, I can get up there. Yeah, this was a uh, show on Saturday afternoons, usually from about 3 to 5.30 on ABC. They ran from the early 60s to the early 90s. So some in the room were not alive during the early, you know, the early 90s. I realized that. But maybe like some of you, you were, maybe some of you were like me. I loved watching Wide World of Sports. You know, it, it showed us sports that were not football, baseball, and basketball, right? Uh, things that I had never really thought about. Professional bowling started on Wild World of Sports. I mean, the televising of it did. Uh, but they would have rodeos, and they would have uh, track and field events, powerlifting. Never saw that before until ABC Wild World of Sports. <coughs> but it was the opening. That was really the best part. Because a lot of times, depending on what sport they were featuring, I didn't watch the whole show, you know, maybe the first 30 minutes. But the opening, that incredible, I mean, it's iconic. The, uh, the video of the very sports, the voice of Jim McKay, very distinctive voice. And you remember, he would first talk about the thrill of victory, right? And uh, they might have the 1980 uh, hockey uh, win over, you know, over Russia. Or I know one of the vignettes I was looking at was Mario Andretti, who just won the Indy 500. But you knew what was coming next. And here's the interesting thing. They changed the, uh, the spot, the video, uh, the introduction from time to time through the years. But they never left this out. It was always there. And those of you who watched it know what I'm talking about, right? because then Jim McKay would talk about the agony of defeat. I wish I could have gotten a picture, but all the pictures and videos I could find were very grainy, so you wouldn't have been able to see it. But here's what happens when he says the agony of defeat, the guy's coming down the, the, the Nordic uh, ski jump, right? And he gets about two thirds of the way down and he goes off the side of the ski jump. And you can see him, he's going head over <coughs> skis all the way down the rest of the hill. And they always tell us, He's okay. He got up and walked away. The thrill of victory. We love that, don't we? We love successes in life. We love to win. I have never heard anybody say, I don't like winning. I like losing. We enjoy success. But we all realize that defeat and loss those things are also a part of being human and the fact that we live in a fallen world. And those things are going to come in our lives also. You know what the question is? How will we deal with those things? How will we deal with the defeats, the loss, the not being successful? Will we allow those things to become literally the agony of defeat in our lives and dwell on those? Or we will, will we allow them to build us in our faith, to make us stronger? And of course, that's the charge, right? That's the biblical charge of James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, James doesn't say that everything that happens is going to be joyful. In fact, he says there are going to be trials coming your way. Now, in the context, is he mostly thinking about the trials that come from being a Christian in an ungodly world, certainly. But 
he's also talking about there are other trials that we face in life, right? Sometimes it's with our health. Sometimes it's with relationships. And still, he says, as Christians, we ought to count it all joy when we face these trials, knowing the end result, if we will stay the course, if we will trust in God, knowing that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. What are we going to do with the trials and the struggles? I don't have to tell any of you that we are living in a very difficult moment. My brother prayed about that just a few moments ago, Brother Mike. Um, with the COVID virus still all around us and it doesn't seem to be getting less, the unrest all around us, there's a lot of uncertainty. And there's no question about that. But here's the problem. If we're not careful, even as Christians, we can allow that uncertainty and those even doubts sometimes. We can allow those things to cause us to live in defeat. <clears throat> Pardon me. Can cause us to make us feel like we're defeated. But friends, it's not God's will for any of us. And y'all pardon my voice this morning. Richard and I were just talking about allergies. I've been struggling with that all week as usual, but I'm going to try to I'll try to lower it a half octave. Maybe I won't screech as much. Friends, it's not God's will, and I know you know this. It isn't God's will for any of us to walk around in our lives in defeat. Rather, it is His will for you and I to rise up no matter what is going on around us and live in victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter what we're facing. And so this morning, I want to suggest to you the first of several principles that will enable us to live victorious lives in Christ, no matter what. And here's the first. It is there. I know it's there. Let me try it this way, Jeff. I think I'm stuck. That's all right. That's all right. Um, it hasn't happened in a while, Jeff. I don't know what happened. All right. Okay. So here's the first principle. To live in victory. To live in victory. To live a victorious life. That begins with a victorious mindset. To live in victory, you must think victoriously. Now, you might think, oh, Rayford's going to give us a pop psychology lesson today. No, it's biblical. It is biblical. The reality is, I don't have to be a psychologist to tell any of you that gloomy, negative thoughts breeds failure. Hey, I can tell you that from personal experience. I know about that. Friends, it is impossible to live in victory without a victorious purpose. A victorious purpose in your heart. And that's, that's good. Now, I'm coming to that in just a second. Paul not only had a victorious mindset through all of the struggles that he faced, I mean, just think about all those things that he went through for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was shipwrecked. He was stoned. He was beaten. He, he went without many times. All for the sake of Christ. Not only did Paul have a victorious mindset, no matter what was going on around him, because of his relationship with Christ. But I'm so glad he tells us about that mindset. He describes that to us in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. I realized as I was preparing this sermon, it's been a while since I used Romans 8 in this sermon. I don't know what happened. Been letting you guys down. What an incredible, incredible text this is. Listen to what Paul says. 
What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's a pretty good place to start in having a victorious mindset, a victorious heart. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? And as God he justifies. Who is to condemn? Jesus, Jesus Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Let me ask you, do these things that Paul's about to talk about, do they bring naturally an idea of success or failure? No. For those who do not know Christ, they're nothing but failure. Listen to what he says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? Do you feel like you're going through some tribulation and distress right now in your life? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or danger? Or sword? Jeff? Sorry, brother. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And friends, I would add to that list COVID-19 and whatever struggles are going on in our nation. None of these things can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Friends, that's victorious. Amen. Now, I want you to notice the point that Paul doesn't say that these things go for another slide. Yeah. That those things that he listed in about verse 35 of uh, the, the, the peril, the the struggle, the uh, all of those things, um, the persecution, distress, famine, nakedness, peril. He doesn't ever say that if you're a Christian, you won't face those things. Any more than James didn't say that if we're Christian, we won't face various trials. In fact, what Paul is saying here in our text is we will face those things. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about our victory. No, in all these things, verse 37, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Friends, I'll probably ask you to do this a few times. Let me tell you what. If you want to keep a victorious mindset throughout your daily life, put these words wherever you go. Everybody's got post-it notes. Put one of these post-it notes on your desk at work. Put one on, maybe above, don't put it on your rearview mirror, but above your rearview mirror in your car. Put these words, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Wherever you go in your life from day to day, to remind you that it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter about circumstances. It doesn't even matter about health and in all of these things we are more than conquerors friends if you will keep that those words in your mind always that will enable you to have a victorious mindset which will lead to a victorious life even in times of struggle I know you heard the old adage you are what you eat well it is absolutely just as true you are what you think isn't it you will be whatever you think. It makes such a big difference. If you focus on the negative things, if you let the setbacks in your life have control, if you are defeated in your thinking, then the victorious life that God wants for you in Christ will be difficult and maybe even elude you. Now, friends, don't misunderstand me. I know when things happen immediately, we feel things. And sometimes the things we feel are, are not 
positive at all. They're negative. We feel hurt. We, we feel sadness. It's part of being who we are, how God made us. But the question is, will we stay in the hurt? Will we stay in the sadness? Or will we remember in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us? That's the big question. If you put your mind, keep your mindset on the victory and hope that we have in Christ, remembering that it isn't because of anything we've done, but because in everything, what He has done for us. It will help us to have a victorious mindset. I love these words of Paul in Romans 15 and verse 13, where he writes near the end of that great book of Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. God gives us the ability to be hopeful people. And being hopeful people, having that hope in God, will enable us to be people who walk in victory. David is such a good example of this. Now, if anybody in the Bible was familiar with loss and setbacks, it was David. You remember, he started out so great, right? Chosen by God to be his king. The, the shepherd boy in the field, he, he is strong, he is faithful, he trusts in God, he defeats, he says, the bear and the lion by the power of God, and he, and he defeats Goliath, and then he spends those 15 to 20 years. Yeah, it was hard, it was difficult, but God gave him victory over Saul. And then when things got easy, right? When things were really good, he had all the success that anybody could want in life. Remember what happened? He forgot about what God wanted. He forgot about what brought the real success. And he gave in to temptation. And he sinned against God. And he sinned against his friend Uriah in, in having that adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. And then he suffered great loss. He lost a child. He had, God said, you're going to constantly have struggle in your life. And he did. His beloved son Absalom turned against him. And yet in all of the struggle and trial, I'm convinced, I'm not saying David was always happy, but I'm convinced that he never lost his trust in God. He never forgot about where his hope was. And I think that David is a good example of the difference that hope can make if we're going to live victorious lives because he didn't allow himself to dwell on his problems. He refused to allow them to bring him down. Instead, he made a conscious decision the hope in God. I could, have, I could share with you this morning hundreds, hundreds of various psalms that describe this. Let me just share with you too. Why are you cast down on my soul? He's talking to himself. That's not a bad thing sometimes. Sometimes we need to tell ourselves, hey, it isn't about what's happened. It's about what God can do. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation. Psalm 71, 14. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Oh, friends, hope, hope, trusting in God will fuel our victorious life and our victorious walk. But here's something else that will enable us and fuel that walk. And that is our giving praise to God. Our giving praise to God for what He has done. We tend to think about what we want God to do, right? Not nearly enough about what He has done. If we're going to live with a victorious mindset, we have got to be people who praise our God constantly. Learning and determining to live a life of praise and thanksgiving. What does it do? Well, it takes my thoughts and my mind off of me. And if it focuses my life on God and what God can do instead of what I can't do. <clears throat> Again, David, such a great example. He understood this need within himself to praise God. Look at not Psalm 98, 1 through 4. Love this psalm. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. 
His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have, been, have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. When I am focused on praising God, when I am focused, when we are focused on praising our Lord Jesus Christ for all He has done for us, because He has made us, remember, more than conquerors. When we are focused on them, we don't have nearly as much time to think about how difficult life can be or how others are treating us or anything else that would contribute to us to us having a defeatist attitude and letting defeat be in control. And here's what else praise will do. It builds courage. When we recognize that the Almighty God we serve who can do the impossible, it gives us courage, and that courage, again, fuels our victorious mindset, our victorious attitude. I love the story of King Jehoshaphat. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Jerusalem is facing a rampaging army of Ammonites and uh, Midianites, I believe it was, Moabites. And things are bad. I mean, things are getting crucial. And King Jehoshaphat, he's, he's, just, he's, he's so concerned, not just for himself, but especially for his people. But he doesn't let the fear that is out there change the hope, the trust that he has in God that's in here. Look, look at what he says. This is just part of his prayer in front of his people. I think that's important to recognize. He, he doesn't go to his, you know, his palace and, and sit and talk and think, why does this happen to me? Why did, it didn't happen to my father. Why? Woe is me. It would be so easy to do that. That's not what he did. Listen to what he listen to this prayer. This is just part of it. O oh Lord God our father of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? And they have lived in it and have built for you in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear us and save. That is the trust. Notice he doesn't begin with asking God to help them. He begins with stating everything that God has done. I know it's not every detail, but he's telling Israel's history. Remember, he wants the people to remember what God has done. And even though he felt, faced real danger, this was real life stuff, friends, it's not just a story. Jehoshaphat didn't dwell on his problems. He didn't complain to God. Praise Jehovah, trusted in front of all of his people that God would deliver them. What a great example. I won't go into the story. You know the story of Paul and Silas imprisoned in Philippi for, for something they didn't do. Mistreated, beaten, in, in stocks and bonds. I don't know if you've ever had, you know, if you've ever gone someplace like an old west town or something or or maybe a New England town where they have stocks and bonds out in the middle of the... And if you ever put those, your hands and feet in those, it doesn't take very long until your back is aching so bad you can't hardly stand it. In the midst of all of the struggle, you know what Paul and Silas did? They didn't complain. They didn't say, Lord, all we did was the right thing. Why are you treating us this way? No. They sang praises to God at midnight and pray. That, friends, is a victorious attitude that leads to a victorious life. Around the time that Julie and I arrived at Oklahoma Christian, 
way back in 1984, in Paris, Tennessee, there was a young man. He was probably about my age, maybe a little bit younger. But he was putting together a singing group. He called them in his image at the time. But by the time we graduated two years later, that group had become the group that you all know as acapella. I bet some of you still have acapella cassettes. I don't think they made any eight track tapes yet, but you probably still have some of the cassettes. Those of you who are old enough like me, before there was anything called a CD, uh, and I, I like all of their stuff, but I really love their early stuff. Great, great songs, right? And they spread a cappella music all over, all over the country. They became well known. In fact, so well known that in time they were put in the Christian Music Hall of Fame. And there was that one song, I believe it was in their third album, came out about 1986. It's called More Than Conquerors. I think the album was called that too. This is the first verse in the chorus. You know the chorus, but maybe you don't remember the first verse. When troubles come knocking at your door, don't be afraid. It's not like before. Don't you give in. Don't let it get you down because you don't have to worry anymore. We've been made more than conquerors overcomers in this life. We've been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Living victorious, friends, begins with a victorious attitude that is fueled by our hope in God. It is fueled by our praise for Him and our trust and our faith in Him. That's where it begins. It, it is a victorious attitude that sets us on the road to victorious living. God wants you to have that victorious life. It doesn't matter what's going on outside these walls. It doesn't matter at all. He wants you to have that victorious life. Jesus died to make it possible. So my last question to this morning is, what are you waiting for? What's holding you back? Well, I recognize that you may be held back because you're a Christian, but you may be forgotten. Maybe it's so easy to let the things going around, the, the, the circumstances, people, to cloud our, our, our thoughts and to change our attitude from a victorious attitude to a defeatist attitude can't let that happen friends but it also may be that you don't have a victorious mindset when I say victorious mindset I'm not talking about victory in this life I'm talking about eternal life because you're not yet walking with Christ <laughs> only the blood can give you the victory that you need and God has made it very simple for you to come into contact with that blood through Obedience to the gospel, becoming in the likeness of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, Paul describes in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 8, so that God can raise you to new life, a victorious life. A life of victory that is not changed by struggle and loss and defeat, but it's made stronger every day as we learn to trust Him more. We can help you in any way this morning. Why don't you please come as we stand while we sing.
332, number 332. Let's get a song before the horse office this morning. Number 332. <clears throat> King of my life. Father, as we continue our prayer to you this morning, 
as we prepare to partake of this fruit of the vine, which to us as Christians represents the Son of, or the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that washes away our sins and the sins of humanity. We pray, Father, that we partake of this in a way that not only would give you glory and give you honor, but would be right in your sight. And Father, we thank you so much for his love for us and giving his life on the cross that he was willing to do so willingly and freely. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the many blessings of this life that you provide for us, the physical and the spiritual. And we ask, Father, that we each give back a portion of what you so richly blessed us with. And we pray, Father, that as we do so, we do that with a cheerful heart. And we pray, Father, that these funds be used not only here in this community, but other places as well, Father, to spread your word. Be with us all, Father, as we go through this week and we continue to live our lives. Help us, Father, to have that victorious attitude. And it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Let's be the closing song this morning. After this, after this song, we'll let a closing prayer. Number 214.
Let's pray. Dear Father, we come to you in prayer today, thanking you for the opportunity that you have given us to worship you, sing praises, pray to you. Uh, we would like to uh, ask that you help all those that are sick and afflicted, and also those that are, are just cannot be with us today for other reasons. Um, we need your guidance, we need your help, uh, and I know that's what they're looking for. Father, also forgive us for our many sins. Thank you for the leadership of this church. Uh, they are very knowledgeable and Christian men, and we know that the world is struggling right now. So we're praying for them to help them make the decisions that they need to make for you and for your church and, and all its members. Forgive us of, of all the many sins that we've done. Um, help keep us in, in good health so we can return uh, to worship you on the next Lord's Day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs>